If you ever meet me in real life and you want to know the cheat codes to make me feel like a disappointed dad, it's very simple. Just tell me you're working on a game but you don't have a Steam page yet. I'm gonna be disappointed in you. I'm gonna be honest. Because in pretty much every single video I make here about developing games is that you need to have a Steam page as fast as possible for your game. If you wanna do it commercially. If it's just a little game jam game, of course. No need in getting a store page up, but if you want to make a real like full length game that you want to charge money for, if you're like one month into development, make a store page. One of the mistakes I see the most developers make is not having a Steam page like a year into their development because they are just throwing away part of their work. So I am relatively close with Chris Zukowski. I've had multiple calls with him at this point. He has roasted our own game forge industry as well. What has gone wrong there? So I've been able to ask him a lot of very pointed questions about where do things go wrong? Why do you need to have those store pages? I'm the guy who makes the store pages here at Bite Me Games as well. So I just want to share some of the thoughts I have with you. Now, why do you need that store page? Why am I so adamant about it? Well, because your Steam store page is going to be the singular most important thing in terms of earning money. It doesn't matter how good your game is. If nobody knows it's available for sale, if nobody knows that it's gonna come out at some point, no one's gonna buy it. It's not gonna magically appear. By working on your game and having that Steam page up during development already, you can send people over to your store page to wishlist it. Wishlist is gonna be a concept you hear a lot. Basically, if you have a game that's like announced, you have a store page up and it's not out yet, people go to your store page, they click the wishlist button, and then the moment that the game releases, they'll get an email from Steam that's like, hey, this game is currently on sale. The more people get that email, the more like wish lists you have, the more Steam is gonna be like, hey, this is gonna get us a lot of sales because if your game sells, Steam earns money as well. So they're gonna wanna push it more to other people on the platform. And in the end, you're just gonna make more money from it. If you don't have a platform to send people to, to wishlist or to do anything else, if you just talk about your game but don't have something actionable, you're throwing away money basically. Because a great example of this is there's a game from some Belgian developers called Nova Dawn Overload, and they were showcasing their game when we were at Gameforce as well. And one of the things that I was like, what are you doing here, is they didn't have a Steam page. All they had was two PCs where people could play the game, and they could play the game, and nothing else. They couldn't do anything actionable. So they still don't have a store page up at the time of recording this. Maybe they have later on. But this means that people who went to GameForce originally probably forgot that the game even existed because they didn't wishlist it. And now they have other stuff going on in life, which means that it's going to be a lot harder for them to get those wishlists once they get closer to launch. Now, why Steam? Why not itch.io? This is a question I get a lot and I have a bunch of reasons for this. The first one is that Steam is just so much larger than itch.io. Yes, you can put stuff on itch.io for free, but you don't have as much of a reach. There are some people on itch.io, absolutely, but it's going to pale in comparison to the audience that you can get on a platform like Steam. It's got hundreds of millions of users and itch.io doesn't even get close to that amount of users. So trying to sell your game it's just going to be done through a smaller audience if you use a platform like Itch. On top of that, Steam is actually really good as a very democratic platform in marketing your game because Steam doesn't sell spots on their site. The only reason that a game is shown on your homepage is because that game is good and because that game is selling. Whereas for example, if you make a mobile game on the Play Store, you can just pay to like advertise the app and it like shows up higher in the rankings, but it can be a garbage game. So by having that system of wishlisting and then showing depending on how many wishlists you get, the more the Steam algorithm is gonna push your game, you as a solo indie developer can compete in a marketing regard with bigger triple indie or even double AA, A, triple A games. If you just have a good marketing strategy, if you have some GIFs go viral, you get a lot of wish lists, you're gonna be put right there next to the biggest Call of Duty or Baldur's Gate or whatever. And that is great visibility to have that you can't have on a platform like itch.io. Steam also offers a lot of nice to haves through their API, such as workshop support, Steam cloud saves or remote play, where you don't actually have to code any multiplayer aspect. If you just make your game couch co-op, you can also make it multiplayer co-op through the internet because of like their tool for remote play. And then this last one is very superficial, but it's just going to give you more credibility as a developer. If you release games on itch, 
you can make very solid games already, but if you just speak to other people in the industry and you're like, yeah, we've never released on Steam before, you're automatically going to take a hit to your credibility. I know you probably think it's dumb, but this is just the way it works. Now, I hope I've convinced you to set up the Steam account. There's one more very common criticism I hear, and that is that, hey, why would I use Steam? It's $100, whereas itch.io is free. Yeah, it's $100, but... I have a few thoughts about that. First of all, this depends a lot on the country you live in, of course, but in Belgium where I live, $100 is nothing. I basically spend more than that on groceries a week at this point than on getting the Steam credit and you get it back at some point. But this credit is very important because it allows Steam to have quality games because this is a barrier of entry that makes it so that the most garbage of asset flips don't get onto Steam because then you have to pay the 100 bucks that you're never gonna see back because your game won't sell more than $1,000 in revenue. Only once you've reached $1,000 in revenue, then you get your $100 back. I can keep going into this, but I know you guys are also gonna tell me like, hey, the economy in Argentina is horrible. I can't afford it. I know, I'm sorry, but there's nothing I can do about that. But keep in mind, I'm sitting in Belgium and for most of our audience who is in like the US, who is in Germany, in the UK, just get the $100 Steam credit. Okay, you've got the store page. It's your blank canvas. Now you get to actually make it. What's the first thing you should do? Is it write a cool description? Is it set up the tags? No, no, we'll get into those. But the first most important thing is getting good art. Steam has this concept of capsule art where every game has a few different formats of like their main image. So for Forge Industry, that's our blacksmith hammering away on the anvil. For Songs of Everjade, that's our warrior standing in front of the temple in the background. But this is the first thing someone will see alongside with the title of your game when they're browsing Steam. They won't get to see any text, that's only once they actually click in or hover over your game to get more info about it. So if you're artsy, you should be able to deal with this. If you aren't an artist, like we aren't, this is one point where you should make the effort to actually spend money on getting a very good piece of art commissioned because your store capsule art is going to be the number one thing people will see about your game. I don't care if your graphics are beautiful of your game itself. If you don't have a good promo art, nobody will ever get to see them because nobody will click your store page open. One thing to keep in mind here, I know a lot of the people watching here are also kind of tech bros who are like all into the AI space. Don't use AI, don't use Midjourney, don't use like any of the image generators. Steam will ban you. Steam does not allow it because you do not own the rights to that image. And there hasn't been a legal precedent set yet that Steam can be like, okay, actually, we're not gonna get sued if you use AI art. So don't use AI art, spend the money here. One bonus tip I have here is if you can get a face, a humanoid face on your capsule because there's been some research done and capsule images that have images on it, like faces, actually perform much better in terms of people clicking on it because our human brains are just like trained to see other humans and we're automatically more interested in them versus just a regular background. Now that we've got the art covered, next up is our short description and our like bigger description. This is something that sure, I can talk a lot about, but I'm gonna have a link down below. Chris Zukowski, who basically does game marketing as his career, has a free masterclass that you can take all about like how do I make good descriptions, what should I put in my store page, what shouldn't I do, and how does the algorithm work, how do I make the most out of it. I'm gonna re-summarize some of the parts here just very quickly, but I really suggest you, it's free, I've taken it, it's really good advice. Head down below and watch that video as well once you're making your store page. Some of the main lessons that I've learned from that course that I wanna touch upon here is, first of all, find three games at least that are going to be in the same genre or the same style that you're gonna make. Copy their store page descriptions and like put the, all three of them side to side so you can look at them in like a spreadsheet or whatever. And then write your own store page description, look at what they have in common, look at how do they work, like what are the keywords that they use, and then just make a hybrid baby of all of those three combined, but then set in like the setting of your game. One other big thing that you should do is don't just write a text only description, but actually put images and even better put GIFs of your game showing your game in motion in the description because people love to see things move. Having pure text is going to be an instant turn off. Having text with some images is gonna be eh. But if you want a god tier store page, you need to have multiple GIFs as much as possible throughout your description because then people can see what you're talking about and they don't just have to read some boring store page description. 
Don't forget to tag as well. The masterclass link below goes really deep into it. Some key things, don't put indie as one of your main tags. That's horrible. The top tags are the ones that fit your game the most. And in the Steam dashboard, you can actually see, okay, these are the tags. If I have this setup, what are the games gonna be that Steam suggests next to my game? Or what are like some other games that would lead to my game? Those are very important to make sure that they match. If you don't spend enough time correctly tagging your game, you're going to lose out on a lot of wish lists. We had our store page for Forge Industry reviewed by Chris Zukowski. And one of the biggest changes that he suggested us, because I had just done the store page tags without really any thought back then, was to actually put some thought into it and redo it. And we pretty much doubled our daily wish lists. Of course, we went from like 10 a day to 20 a day, still nothing crazy, but these things count up. The more you do it upfront, the more it will compound over time. And then lastly, trailers. You should have a trailer. And once again, the main goal of the trailer is just to show movement. Don't make like a whole cinematic story because people don't watch full trailers. They just skip through a few parts to get a feeling of how does this game look? How does combat look? And then they move on. They're not going to watch your trailer start to finish. On top of that, there's another YouTuber, Derek Lieu, who makes a lot of trailer videos on like how to do them optimally. He's way better at it than we are. I've made a video about Forge Industries trailer as well, which you can check out here, but it's not the best. It's a pretty old video as well at this point, but I go a bit more in depth there. Don't do things like having long logos of your studio at the front of your trailer. Nobody cares and it's gonna drop your audience retention because they're already gonna be like, this isn't gameplay. I'm not interested in this. And then there's one more thing I wanna talk about that isn't really covered as much. That is just purely from my own experience. And that is that localizations matter, but they also don't matter really. So what do I mean by this? Back when we were making Songs of Average 8 Steam page, one of the things that I thought was, okay, we need to localize in like 10 different languages. And it is, you have like Korean, Japanese, Chinese, we have Brazilian, Portuguese, we have Spanish, we have French, we have Dutch. We have a whole list of languages, but we saw no difference in our wish lists. And I was, confused. I was like, hey, I thought I read online that, hey, having more localizations actually influences the Steam algorithm. Where did it go wrong? Well, I asked Chris this and the answer here is that localizations help, but only if you already have some traction. So one of the things with those wish lists is if you get enough wish lists in like a single day or like a single two week time period, Steam is going to put your game on the new and trending or popular upcoming tabs, which gives you a lot more visibility to new players who could be interested in your game. If your game is localized and not just your store page, but your game has to be localized as well, you will show up in the German new and trending. Whereas if your game isn't localized in German, it's not gonna show up there. It's only gonna show up in the English one, for example. So it's gonna be a lot harder to be competitive than in that new and trending. Don't just translate your store page. That is one thing I've learned as well, because if you only have the store page translated, but not the game, you're not gonna come into those feeds regardless because your game has to be fully localized. So in the end, was it a waste of effort? I think so, because some of the languages such as Korean, we're not planning on localizing right now. We're planning on localizing four languages right now. English, Japanese, Chinese, and Dutch. Just because we know those languages, it's easier for us to localize that way. But the other languages such as Portuguese, Brazilian, we're not planning on localizing the full game into those languages. So it doesn't really matter because it doesn't actually give us a boost in visibility. So now that you've seen this entire video, my main question is, what are you waiting for? Why do you not have a store page yet? Go right now. I'll put a link to the Steam signup or whatever in the description as well if you want. Go and get that store page. It's really important if you want to market your game to have that store page up as fast as possible. I can't stress this enough. Just do it. It's a hundred bucks. It's not that much in the grand scheme of things because it's going to allow you to, if you make a good game and you do some effort marketing, you're going to earn that back easy. We did horrible marketing for Forge Industry, but we had a store page up early. We had it up almost a year before launch, which was good. So this allowed us to slowly start accumulating those wish lists already. Anyways, that's all I needed to say. If you're new here, we're game developers. We've made our own game for Gen 3 before. We're working on our next game, Songs of Evergate, and we're just sharing information about how we run our studio, how does it look like to make games as a professional career in a indie aspect still. So if that's something that you're interested in, be sure to head down below and subscribe as it really helps us out. And you get these videos twice a week. That's all I had to say. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.